Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter at Second Swing. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the adjustable hosel settings on your driver. We've got a Ping G410 Plus here. We're gonna be uh, dissecting the benefits that someone can, can obtain by adjusting the driver correctly through the hosel settings. We've got really four kind of settings to, to choose from here that are gonna be the most extreme settings. Thomas is gonna hit some shots with each one, and we're gonna look at how all the data can change. So, Thomas, before we really get into it, um, kind of an overarching view here. What do you think we're gonna see from this test? Yeah, so you mentioned four settings. So we're gonna play around with the standard setting, minus 1.5 setting, plus 1.5 setting, and the maximum flat setting, which is essentially 180 degrees twisted. Um, so three degrees flatter, yeah. uh, still at 10.5 degrees aloft. So we're gonna test those. What I would expect is, you know, starting with the go, going to the minus 1.5, I would expect it to maybe be a little bit more of a fade bias shot, spinning a little bit lower, and maybe probably going the furthest. Okay. What I would expect with the plus 1.5 would be the opposite, maybe spinning a little bit more, going a little bit shorter, but maybe a lot easier to get that club head to release okay. over to, to the left, essentially. Yep. And then the flat setting, essentially three degrees flatter, it's a, it's a big, dif big, big difference. I would expect that to be even harder for me to be able to get that club head to release over. Sure. So probably out on the, on the right side a little bit as well. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, let's see if your hypothesis is correct, huh? Let's find out. Okay, Thomas, so we'll start with everything is standard and neutral as possible, correct? Yep, so this is the Ping G410 plus 10.5 degree driver at the standard 10.5 degree setting. Okay, so, yeah. and the shaft playing here? So I've got the uh, Ping Tour 65X. Okay. It's pretty similar to weight to what shaft I play with mine. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure I use the exact Ping hosel tip so sure. we could make those adjustments with yeah. um, going flat, going, um, adding a little bit more uh, face angle or yep. decreasing the face angle. Yep, sure. All right. All right, so first adjustment. So 10.5 minus one and a half. So just to clarify, this is, the loft is now nine. It's face angle. So that's so, face angle. Yeah, it, so it's face angle, so. So the loft is still 10 and a half. So it's, so it's a, well, it is less loft, but what we're, how we're getting there essentially is by kind of, what we're doing is actually kind of opening the club face. A okay, bit. okay. A lot of people get confused when you talk about make an adjustment to the loft on a driver. Most imp important thing to get done first is get the right loft on the actual driver, so yeah. the stated loft. Yeah. From that's there, a, making the point. changes, you know, a lot of the time people think if I'm, say for example, going from 10.5, it may say minus 1.5, um, this driver's not really actually gonna play nine degrees of loft. Yeah. Essentially what it's doing is changing the face angle and not really changing the loft of the driver, essentially. Okay. Yeah, so. Four with that one. All right, so now we can go plus 1.5. Yep, so let's go the opposite direction now. Club speed there was very high. 115.5. Oh, Woo. decent sized drawer on that one for me. Yeah. All right, now do you want to go extreme right. flat here? Yeah, let's go three degrees flat. Okay.
multiplied, Benny. We got minus 1.5. Yep. My problem is I react to the flat setting. I'm like this <laughs> instantly. I'm like, it just feels like I want to react to it. Okay, Thomas, we've got the data from, what, 30 tee shots here? Um, why don't we just go through and kind of um, re-explain, you know, what each setting here is doing to the golf club. Okay, so the first setting we did was 10.5 standard, so it was that, that zero that was on, yeah. on, the, on the tip. It's playing 10.5, not changing the, the line sure. angle, not changing the face angle at all. So 10.5 standard is 10.5 standard. And then what we did for the second time um, was we kind of opened the face angle a little bit. The minus 1.5 um, you know, plays a little bit less left, but what we're actually doing is opening the face angle. Okay. Um, then we did the opposite, so we went plus 1.5, closes the face angle, makes the goal both maybe fly a little bit higher, a little bit more left on the okay. club. And then we tested the flat setting. Flat setting with for a ping, we had at uh, 10.5 all the way twisted 180 degrees um, on the flat setting at 10.5, which is three degrees flatter than standard. Okay. So flatter, essentially, the idea of that, maybe a little more of kind of a fade push bias, yeah. essentially. Okay, okay. Yep. So looking at the data now, um, is this kind of what you, know, what we, you would expect right going in? Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. I mean, across the board, you can see trends. Yeah. You can see trends just by looking at kind of the, the dispersion. We'll notice, you know, for example, the um, the purple circle was a little bit further to the left. It also was a little bit shorter, added a little bit more loft, made it a little bit more, um, closed that face angle a little bit, caused that ball to spin a little bit more. It was spinning at 2,900 RPMs, which is higher than everything else, yep. and also caused it to launch a little bit higher. Also interesting, if you look at the face angle number here, minus 0 0.7, it had the face angle at impact was the close the most. Mm -hmm. um, when I was set up down, for me, I, it looked like it was closed. Yeah. It looked like it was just going to go, go left. I think the reason why I didn't hit it quite as far left as I thought it might have is because I, I react. We're human. We, yeah. all, we always kind of react to, to the setting. The same thing happened to me when we were, I was hitting the flat setting. I felt like I had to push that club down yeah, to feel like sure. it was just, you know, mm -hmm. it was just... I went straight from the plus 1.5 to flat. It was kind of a big yeah. change, essentially. Um, so yeah, so plus 1.5, you know, didn't go quite as far. I was able to draw it a little bit, a little bit spinnier, a little bit higher. Um, when we did the opposite, we went to minus 1.5. We'll notice the lowest spin, um, highest ball speed, um, lowest launch, and the highest distance out mm -hmm. of them all. Um, we notice that's that yellow. Uh, circle there that was going a little bit further down the fairway there yeah. um, was also interesting when you know because it's technically open the face we'll notice the trend of it being to the right you know closed purple was to the left yep we've got the yellow circle a little more to the right so a little kind of a little bit more of a fade bias essentially we're doing that um, by you know reduce reducing the loft a little bit but really by kind of opening that face angle yep. a little bit um, 
the other fade bias option that we had, I talked about, was the flat setting. Flat setting, 10.5 flats, three degrees flatter. We'll notice it's got a very, very similar trend. So a little bit further over to the right. We've got this one over here that I did actually hook myself. Yeah. Um, but we'll notice we've got seven, six or seven of these others here that were consistently over here to the right. Um, we'll notice 10.5 versus the minus 1.5 didn't go as far mm -hmm. just because it was spinning a little bit more. Um, you know, any time the ball goes to the right, you'd expect it to spin a little bit more. Yeah. But when we had it down 1.5, the spin rate was significantly lower. So it was 700 RPMs lower. So we got there um, by being able to get that ball to roll out a little yeah. bit further with the one, minus 1.5. We noticed yeah. the carry distance was actually higher with the 10.5 degree sure. flat, but it rolled out because the spin was quite lower. So yeah, yeah, quite, quite interesting there. Um, with the flat setting, we'll notice my club face was open the most, so 0 0.3 degrees yep. open. Um, when we had the minus 1.5, so a little bit more open face on the, on the club, 0 0.2, so mm -hmm. open. One plus 1.5 degrees was closed, and yep. the standard was just slightly closed there. Right. So that's me just trying to hit a little bit of a draw, essentially. So really kind of interesting across the board to see what happened with regards to those numbers. Also, what I found really interesting was the peak height. The peak yeah. height changed a lot when, when we made these changes. Um, standard setting was about 110 feet in the air. 100, 110 feet in the air is usually what I'm trying to hit my driver. Yeah. Um, when we went down, minus, so minus 1.5, open the face a little bit, a little bit less loft on the club, the height was 86 feet in the air. So it was lower, low spin, low launch. Um, plus 1.5 was 136 feet in the air. So mm -hmm. it was significantly higher there as well. Um, carry distance was almost identical to the minus 1.5, but yep. we noticed because the spin was almost 1,000 RPMs higher, um, it was basically went about 18 yards further. Yep. And then the flat setting um, was a little bit closer to what we may expect with the, with the standard setting. It was 120 feet versus 110. Yep. Um, because it's a flat setting, more of a fade bias, the ball is going to fly a little bit higher and spin just a little bit more. Right. So, okay. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, we got all kinds of, we got really clear kind of um, trends going on here, like you mentioned. We got, you know, the the plus 1.5 setting, you have the farthest left, but not quite as far, uh, just because, again, you got playing it a little bit higher loft versus, you know, you get uh, kind of more up into the right. If you look at the map on the right here, farther into the right, you get down to your minus 1.5 with least amount of spin, lowest peak height. Um, now, let's say, let's say you're fitting yourself or you're fitting a customer that has this type of uh, you know, data dispersion with each setting. Yep. Um, is there one that you're going to recommend, or is it going to be? I mean, obviously you're going to base it a little bit on what they're looking to do with their driver. But um, what would you recommend uh, given the the data here? Yeah. So, for example, if I had a customer coming in that was fading the ball, really having a hard time with that with that right ball, you know, what I would consider is that plus one point yeah. five. Now you got to keep in mind this is without adjusting the center of gravity on the drivers at all. Sure. So we had that setting all kind of in the neutral as well. Yeah. So what we're doing, plus 1.5 is closing the club face a little bit. If, for example, they're consistently hooking the ball, we could go minus 1.5 um, to get that ball to maybe be more of a kind of a little fade bias. The flat setting is also a great option um, because it's just like kind of like with an iron, anytime you're going to flatten that golf club a little bit, it makes it harder to get that toe kind of release over. Yeah. That's, a, that's always a great option there as well. For me, um, I personally am with, with a driver, I, I'm trying to make sure I get it over 300 yards. Yeah. Um, so for me, if we're going up, you know, plus 1.5, even though I was fading the ball today, you know, I, I want to hit the ball a little further. Yeah. I've got a kind of a little bit of ego. I feel like out on the, <laughs> out on the golf course, I feel like I can control it maybe a little bit easier, yeah. shake the shots, pick a target kind of, kind of thing. Even if I have to, or maybe I'll hit a little aim down the left side and a little fade, but yeah. minus 1.5 for me with the 10.5 degree head would yeah. be a better option. What would be probably the better option for me would be actually having a nine degree sure. driver. Yeah. Part, of the, part of the fitting process would be actually yeah. first. Yes. Type of you know flex first, head, then play around with some different golf shaft options and then maybe fine tuning, maybe try and make it more upright, yeah, flatter, with these settings, uh, yeah. if we can with, with, with the settings. Yeah. yeah. But most important, you get, get that loft correct on the driver head first. So that stated loft 
as opposed to trying to manipulate it with right. the face angle, essentially. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, we look at this data here, you know, let's say someone, you know, I know, I think there's a lot of golfers out there that kind of just pick a driver and they play it standard setting, right? So you got the 10 and a half degree standard setting here. And I mean, looking at just the dispersion map here, it's a pretty big difference. Like, for example, if someone is missing to the right with standard setting, the plus 1.5 setting does show a pretty significant difference there. Now, it is a loss of a little bit of distance, but it's, it would straighten somebody out that is missing to the right in the standard setting. It would. It would definitely straighten them out because it is closing the club face. Yep. They don't really, I mean, some people can notice it. I could definitely notice yeah. when I put it down just because I had gone from minus 1.5 yeah. to plus 1.5. But it's just essentially kind of a little piece of mind and maybe a little bit make it a little bit more of a you know upright closed yeah. setting essentially. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, this is some great information here, and I think it really shows the importance of um, you know the benefits that someone can get from uh, correctly adjusting their driver with these hosel settings. Uh, and the Ping G410 Plus gave us a bunch of options that we could test out here. So, uh, golfers out there, if you um, a if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. Uh, and we'll get more content out there like this for you in the future. But also, B, if you uh, have more questions or would like some more information on the driver settings that might be best for you, I stop in a second swing with your driver, talk to a master fitter such as Thomas, uh, and we'll get that figured out for you. So, Thomas, thanks again for hitting a bunch of tee shots for us and uh, explaining the data. No problem. I'm worn out now. So. <laughs>